and introduce him to you first. Fighting out of the blue corner, he weighed in at 74.9 kilograms and trains under Eugene Behrman out of City Kickboxing. Fighting out of Auckland, New Zealand with a professional record of seven wins for just three defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the cage, John Trouble And introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. He weighed in at 74.8 kilograms and trains under Ben Vickers at a scrappy MMA. Fighting out of Perth, Western Australia with a professional record of two wins for just two defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Wes Kappa! They got to touch gloves. I'm very interested to see how uh, both fighters come out. They're obviously showing respect and touching gloves, but we know Wes has got a lot of power in these hands. Is he going to throw, and, and what's John going to do to to engage the grappling? Or we know he's got very, Good very high, high level of kickboxing too. Yeah, but uh, again, I've always been impressed with the cardio and the footwork. The footwork of Wes Capper and the speed of the jab. Let's see if he brings it into the cage tonight. And a fight that he wanted. He wanted to come back to Eternal MMA. Welcome back, Wes Capper, as he takes on John Bruin from New Zealand. And we know Bruin's got a, a long list of uh, very well-regarded teammates. He, he, he's experienced a lot of this punching power before. So it's going to be interesting to see how, how they feel out this process. You can see Wes stalking him now. And is this the, the best position for John to be? But there we go. There's the there's shot the from distance. And again, this is going to be a big thing for confidence for both fighters. We can see Wes really is trying to keep hold of it. And he's posting up on his arm. But he's going to control that hand, the inside. But this is going to allow Bruin to try it, square up, and then pass those legs. No doubt he would have been working about this on, in camp, knowing that uh, we knew team this would have known what, what Cap Capper will bring to the table. And so. this is where we, we really need to see Wes engage those butterfly hooks now and use that cage to his advantage, get onto a side, and, and, and try and start building up. And John Bruin here is doing really well to keep him back off the cage and not allow him to get back on his butt and start building up. What's weird for me is I've never seen Wes Kemper in this position before, obviously. Yeah, and it's a, it was a, a great shot at range from Bruin. Uh, and now he can sit here in uh, half guard and control this position. Wes really needs to try to get more into his side, use that underhook and build it up. And there you can see he's built off the cage because this is where he wants to be. And now you can see John transitioning to the back. And Wes, again, he can shake him off with one hook, whereas Bruin is really going to try and fight to get that right hook in. And what Wes needs to be really careful of is that kill arm and that choke. Because if that choke gets sunk in from this position, Bruin can finish. I think the key here for Capra is to stay calm. Yeah, correct. And control. You can see he's controlling Bruin's right arm, but that left arm can come through as the kill arm. Oh, he's almost shaking him off there. So good work by Capra. Very composed from both fighters. No rushing. And Wes obviously wants to keep his base and stay standing, but he's really doing well to fight that hand, as you can see, controlling that hand with both arms. But what Bruin has done, who has reached around and is controlling that little baby hook there. Said uh, Wes Kappa's uh, going to want to explode and get out of this position and get it back where he wanted, which is obviously on the feet, but uh, so far playing into uh, part of Bruin's game plan because, again, he's a good striker himself, but he knows that uh, the striking capabilities of Wes Kappa. Correct, and they've both done, I mean, John done really well here. So what he, John needs to be careful of is not let Wes's hips stay higher than his. And you can see, there we go, he's kicked his legs out to change it. But that's really well done by both. And John's managed, if he's locks his body lock up here, this can be a very dangerous position for Wesley. Good effort uh, for, for Kappa to, uh, but looks like he's trying to get the underhooks now. Yeah, and watch he's Wes. Well. Look, look, very what good. Wes is really going to do is frame off and throw a short shot. But Bruin's done really well to transition that head. And you can hear the corner of uh, Kappa calling for his weight because this is exactly where he really needs to fight to his side now and use an underhook, whereas John can really try and stay on top and use his weight to keep his back flat. Because with that back flat on the mat, it's uh, very disadvantageous for Kappa, whereas Bruin can really control this position and aim to keep Wesley fat, uh, flat sorry, and, and post up and, and, and rain down some damage. You can see how experienced Kappa is. I'm not talking about cage experience, I'm talking about fight experience because he's still pretty calm in there based on the situation where he doesn't want to be in. Yes, that is true, but what I'd also say to that is Wes needs to just start working working to his base and to the side because Wes is great at standing up if he can, if he can build up. 
Uh, and I'd really like Wes to try and keep turning into him here. But John's doing a really great job. And this is where this is where Wes is great at building up. But he just really is a great transition from Bruin. I see Bruin is desperate to keep uh, Wes Kepper in the same position. Yeah, and it's a, it's a very smart plan by Bruin. That was an amazing transition from the front, front headlock position straight to those legs. But Wes has done really well. The further he bases his legs out and incorporates that split. Here we go. This is where Wes... Now it's going to be interesting to see how both of the fighters react fatigue-wise from that grab. That's a, a very exhausting process for both guys. This is where Wes Kepper is trying to use the jab, follow up with the right, uh, right punch. And you can see Wes going high, low, high. He's trying to get him down to the mat again, so this is an uh, opportunity for Wes Kepper now. He's weathered the early parts of the storm in round one. Oh, look at that. He certainly might have hurt him yeah. there. Big shots from both. And this is where we really need to see the straight Sharp, short, sharp straights from uh, Wes. Oh, look at that. Good hands by Kappa. But great head movement by Bruin. It's like really oh, look at well. that. He's down again. And I think that's more slips. Yeah, Bruin's, I think doing, so. Bruin's doing really well to keep his head moving and keeping off centre. But I'd really like to see Wes let go of that right hand down the pipe. Be careful about throwing that. Uh, that's a closing stage of the round one, though. That's so. a great entry there from John. And if, he can, if he can finish this, see, that's a big confidence boost to Kappa there. Wow. What an end to round one. A very intriguing yeah, round. Really and look, here's an opportunity now because the severely headed uh, fighters we enter round two. But I think what Bruin's done really well is to start throwing those lower leg kicks and trying to keep slow Kappa down because Kappa's going to do a lot of damage with those hands. He's really throwing a lot of nice feints and leading in. This matchup presented by proper number 12, Irish Whiskey. And this is where you can see Bruin's got the body lock in there. And Wes really needs... I mean, Bruin has got a Von Flew choke finish on his record, so he could, he could lead into that position there. But Wes really needs to work to get flat off his back. He and worked work hard the, the first round. Let's see if he can do it again. Because you can see, John, this is where he really controlled the first round. And outside of that last minute, John was doing amazing. He was. But that, I think Wes, uh, the pretty frustrated that uh, he's in this position after and then, the way in of round So one. Wes has really engaged that butterfly hook well to try and create space, but he really needs to, as he engages that butterfly, not stay flat on his back. And this is exactly where Bruin wants to be. He's very happy to hear, regain his senses from that first round, and just control and ride this round out, and then slowly, slowly start instilling some damage. And you can see Wes has got his left underhook in there, which he's really trying to do. And as you can see, the corner of Marco Ponosh uh, and Ben Vickers, and there's the setting up a setting up a dust, setting up a dust. So Wes really needs to clear that uh, that uh, his left arm because that is what's going to choke, and that's what's going to cut off the blood flow. Oh, he's, oh, he's worked well there, Kappa. Very well. And this is where he wants to stand up. Very well. Very well done. Got a bit more time to work than he did in the first round. And jab, that, jab. That was a great position from Bruin there to, to, to look to create that. It's almost a year uh, from a dash to a... Oh, uh, is that a low blow? Yeah. Nathan Pinterbonner has called time and has called a low blow on Wes Kappa. And I think this is going to be a, a time for both fighters to to, to gather their, their breath back. and Probably more so for Bruin because he's the one that looked uh, tired. But again, he... He's game plan, you can know what it is right now. He's just going to try and get it to the mat. Yeah, and it's a, a relentless, it's a very tiring plan from Bruins team. But so far, I think he is, uh, he's, when he gets those positions, he's very much familiar. And that was a, a tight choke, but Wes did really well to, to base out there. And once he can get to his, get to, to turtle and build up from there. If we look at the uh, low blow on the Gypsy Club, replay it right on the spot. So, uh, and Wes Kappa knew it straight away as well. So, uh, look, the, quick, the moment for Wes Kappa now is that he's got more time to work than he did in round one. He Correct. got it with about a minute left in the fight. He's got three minutes to work here where he's got to avoid the takedown. And uh, and what we saw at the end of that first round, which was the most positive output from Wes, is when he pushed forward and put Bruin on the back, get back against the cage, he landed really? some damaging shots. Some damaging shots, sorry. Yeah, and, and I believe that Wes knows he can do it again, but he's got to just Correct. stay away from the takedown. But Bruin's pace is relentless so far, so if he can keep this for three rounds, it's going to make for a very exciting fight, which we're already enjoying so far. Here we go. Action back underway in round two. And I'd really love Wes to throw that straight right down the pipe and see if he can, he can inflict some more damage. 
Nice and, uh, kick there by Bruin. It's very interesting to see Bruin not throwing more out, more leg kicks and really keeping, uh, slowing Wes's movement down. And yeah, no, it is surprising because that's the Bruin wouldn't be expecting a takedown attempt on when he tap. When he's throwing the shots from that distance, Wes, when he set them up, he, he was getting leg entries uh, and really executing them well. There we go. Now he's uh, telegraphed that. There this, a couple this, of is gonna, this is going to be a, a big confidence boost for Kappa here. Uh, and this is where Bruin, especially if he's tiring, and on the back foot, it's a tough one. Wes really needs to come forward, but you can see Bruin is very keen to engage. Better get up, and he does. And this is where, in those, in those <laughs> shots, you don't, want to, you don't want to run the rush, because that's where those short, sharp shots can land a damaging effect in those exchanges. Crowd appreciating the little spot yeah. from Pepper. But both look to be more composed now. I think Bruins recovered well after what we saw at the end of round one. Correct, and, and I think if you look at control time, he is leading this round, whereas Wes really needs to push this last two minutes to cement this round here in his corner. Because Wes is starting to stalk him down and come forward, which is not a good look for the judges for Bruin. The only thing that Kappa probably see that needs to work on is input, so he's looking for his openings. But I really do like that lead high kick from Bruin. As Wes goes down to the body, Bruin is flicking that out there nicely. I always said the longer the fight goes on, the better for Kappa. Correct, and especially with these shots coming in now, they're going to get oh. slower and slower as Wes adds up more damage. A body shot might have uh, hurt Bruins again. Because he needs to get off the cage. He really can. Oh, another body there. shot. I think Kappa's going to look to go to the body and then uh, and also yeah. look for the jab. And he's been setting up that body all fight. And really. Well, uh, see, that was. Oh, oh he's, he's, he's hurt. Yeah, Kappa, a, opportunity for Kappa. Let him, oh, let him stand he, up. Get him to stand up. That'd yeah. be the smart thing to do. You've got to get him to stand up Correct. and uh, stop giving him time to recover. I know what Kappa's doing here. I mean, yeah, I think both fighters are heat in the moment, but Bruin almost seems to be hurt his ankle or foot. I don't yeah, think Yeah, I think it happened at the end of the first round. Yeah, they're, gonna, they're close to throwing in the towel, it looks like. But yeah, this is uh, Kappa's opportunity. He's still got 36 seconds left in the op uh, second round. See, oh, he's down. Oh, he's down. Wow. No, he's gone for a takedown. But again, Kappa can see them coming a mile away. And again, he should just let him stand up. Correct, let him stand. But I think there is an injury here. Yeah, I Bruin. think so. And, the, and the, you can hear the corner calling for it. They can, they can hear that there is damage, and they're telling him to, where's to come forward. And, and this fight. is a good look for Kappa, not for Bruin. Correct, especially that round is a clear Kappa round now for the way uh, this is finished. But I think there is, a, there is a front leg lead injury for Bruin. So if Kappa could utilize that. Hey, uh, look at that at the end of the second round. But I've watched the Bruin corner very closely here because Bruin is getting up very slowly. And I think there is a. Yeah, an look at that. Look, it, in. Sa it's the same body language at the end of the first round. And I think they're going to look very closely. And it will be his team's decision because if he can't stay upright, there is uh, a problem. The beautiful crystal. And I don't, know where they, girl. I don't know where that shot came from. We saw it in the first round, which ended the, the first round very much in Wes's. Now nah, they're, they're going to stop it. They're going to stop it. They're stopping it. Wow, yeah. that's a TKO wow. victory yeah. for Wes Kappa. Can you believe it? I thought that they might have tried to say, go out for the third round and take it to the ground. But, yeah. but that obviously damages too, uh, too much. So we'll find out. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of round number two, our Blue Corner decided to, uh, decided to call a stop to this fight, declaring your winner by a corner stoppage, Wes Kappa!